In this video, we'll do a short example that will give a physical interpretation to Parseval's theorem. And for that, we'll consider the displacement of a damped harmonic oscillator as a function of time, which is given by this quantity. So omega naught is the natural frequency of the oscillator, and tau is related to the, uh, the damping coefficient. So to start giving an interpretation to one half of Parseval's theorem, we need to remember that the square modulus of the displacement of a damped harmonic oscillator is proportional to the sum of the kinetic and potential energy of the oscillator, which means that when you integrate that over all time, this gives you the total energy transferred by the oscillator uh, over the total lifetime of its oscillations. To compute the other side of Parseval's theorem, we need to find the Fourier transform of the displacement f of t. And this is normally given by an integral from minus infinity to infinity. Uh, f of t is a factor of one over two pi in our convention. Times dt. Since our displacement is zero for any time smaller than zero, we can replace the lower bound by zero because the rest, the other part doesn't contribute. To make an T. DT. To compute this integral, we need to replace sine by its complex representation. Divided by 2i, so that we, we only work with exponentials, which are easy to integrate. So this gives pi t over tau. All right, and then grinding through uh, this integral, we should get the following result. So this is the Fourier transform of the displacement of a damped harmonic oscillator. And the interpretation of the square modulus of this is this is the energy content per unit frequency in our oscillator, or in other words, the energy spectrum. And when you integrate it over all the frequencies, this gives you the total energy given of 
by the damped harmonic oscillator in terms of its frequency. And Parzival's theorem is essentially saying this is equivalent to the, the integrating the sum of the kinetic and potential energies over all time, which also gives you a total energy transferred by the oscillator. So uh, in the next video, we'll go through a couple of examples on how do you actually use the direct delta function. We've only introduced it and shown a, a quick application, a quick and simple application to the right Parzival's theorem. Uh, we'll also show some examples of how we can use this for other useful computations, how we can use the direct delta function for other useful computations.